Send these off to, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. These are last week's. Oh, I was sure I had the right papers. Melvin, what's wrong with you? You know, you've been fouling up quite a bit the last couple of weeks. You gotta give them the ball. Well, it's just that I, I might as well tell you. I, I have to tell somebody. I, I'm in love. <laughs> in love? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Melvin. It, it's Miss Grant, the, the new receptionist. Huh. She doesn't even know I'm alive. I've sent her anonymous flowers, chocolates, poems, hoping that she'd put two and two together. No, but listen, you know what you want to do? You take her out on a date. You take her to a very nice, quiet place, you know, candlelight, soft music, wine. Then when the time is right, you just kind of slip your arm no, around. No, no, no. I, I get nosebleeds when I get emotional. <laughs> no, then why don't you just go and tell her? I can't do that either. You see, I, I'm too shy. But I can't go on like this. I can't think. I can't function. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Look, I'll bail you out. I'll tell her for you. How's that? Oh, would you really, Mr. Tucker? Would you do that? Anything to get the office back to normal, Melvin. I'll talk to her later. Oh, thanks, Mr. Tucker. You'll dance at my wedding. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. I'm glad I caught you before you left because I wanted to have a word with you and, uh, well, it's, it's a little personal. It is? Yeah. Well, for some time now, you've been receiving, uh, chocolates and, uh, and flowers and, uh, and even poems from an anonymous admirer. He hasn't been anonymous to me. Oh, oh you've known? Well, at first, I only hoped, Mr. Tucker. Now I know. Oh, good. Well, then you've uh, you saved me a whole explanation. <laughs> no need to explain. Well, I'm sure that everything will work out the way you want it to. Good night, Scrap. <laughs> he called me Miss Graff. <laughs> She's had a crush on you all along. All you had to do was tell her. No, it can't be. I don't believe you. You're lying to me. You want to you wanna torture me. See me suffer. Melvin, it's the truth. Go out and talk to her yourself. I will. I will. I'll pleasure my undying affection. I'll declare my eternal love. I'll tell her of my boundless devotion. 
Well, I say. Uh, you'll think of something. I know, Mavis. I could hardly believe it myself. I didn't get a chance to tell him how I felt, so I wrote him a letter. I really poured my heart out to him. Listen to this. Dear Sir, your confession of love kindled a burning ecstasy in me, equaled only by the raging fires of your own ardent passion. We shall walk together, star-crossed lovers throughout eternity, two souls seared together in the fiery crucible of tempestuous desire. Very truly yours, Alice P. Graff, assistant receptionist. I copied the whole thing from Torrid Love. Alice. I just had to put my feelings down on paper. It's me, Melvin. Shh, shh, shh. It was so romantic. There wasn't anyone else around. I'm here. Get lost. And then Mr. Tucker came up to me. I stood transfixed, and my heart beat wildly as he poured out his love for me. Mavis, he's been worshipping me from afar. He's the one who sent me all the candies and the flowers and the poems. No. Yes. And then he took me into his strong arms and crushed me to his powerful chest until I swooned. Oh, listen, Mavis, I gotta hang up. I wanna get this letter in the last mail. Bye-bye. Oh. You bluebeard. What are you talking about? You wanted about? it for yourself. What? You stole my gal, broke my heart, and even took credit for my begonias. Begonias? Oh, don't play innocent. I know it all now. You've stolen Miss Graff from me. Now, whoever gave you that idea? She did. Oh, that's ridiculous. She's got it all wrong. Come on, let's get this thing straightened out right now. Okay, I'll call your bluff. <laughs> well, I, I guess we just all take care of it tomorrow. Sure this isn't some kind of trick? Melvin, now will you be sensible? I have no interest whatsoever in Miss Graff. I'm a happily married man, and I'll be glad to tell her so. You promise? First thing tomorrow? I promise. Believe me, I'm more anxious to see this thing cleared up than you are. Great, thank you. going to sit down, sweetheart? Oh, oh, sure, sure. <clears throat> Who's the letter from? A letter? Uh, the plumber. No, 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 the other one. Oh, oh, it's just an ad. Listen, Nancy. No, the other one. Honey, I told you, it's the plumber. Cal, I brought in three letters. Oh, honey, look for yourself. There are only two. You, uh, you must have imagined it. It was a pink envelope, scented, mailed in Los Angeles and postmarked 710. <laughs> I imagine. Well, if you're that unsure about it, Let's forget it. <laughs> All righty. Forget I mentioned it. I'm just going to have to learn to control my imagination. Yeah. I right, want some toast? Yes, please. Sorry, Cal. That's okay. <laughs> Honey! What? The toast. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at it's that. burning. Don't just sit there. Pull it. Uh, oh, the plug. It's, Come uh, on. Oh, oh, here it is. Here it is. <laughs> You know, it must be a short or something. I'll, uh, I'll drop it off my way to work and have it fixed. Be careful. You'll burn yourself. Oh, don't worry, darling. I'm, I'm always careful. <laughs> Have you talked to her yet? No, Melvin, not yet. I knew it. Melvin, will you take it easy? Now, I'm going to straighten this thing out right now. Just send her in here, and I'll tell her that I'm a happily married man, okay? Good. Right. That should do it. Oh. And why are you breaking your heart? Would you put in a good word for me? <laughs> Thanks. You'll dance at my way. I know, I know. Just send her in and come back later. Right. Now come in. Miss Graff. Be still, my foolish heart. <laughs> Miss Graff, I, uh... That voice. It's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> would, you, would you sit down, please? I hear and obey. Miss Graff, there's something I, I think I should tell you. I'm afraid that um, 
Uh, Scrap? Hello. 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 <laughs> yeah, uh, Miss Graff, there's something I, I think you should know. I mean, I mean this is it's ridiculous. Did you get my letter? Oh, oh yeah, I got it. I wrote it while the flames of love were burning inside me. Could could you see it in the letter? Uh, yeah, it's it's still burning. <laughs> Look, Miss Graff, yesterday when I spoke to you, see, I wasn't talking about me. I, I was talking about Melvin. Oh, I can't believe that. I mean, all the things you said. And... Well, you misunderstood, Miss Graff. You see, well, I'm a married man. Oh, that explains it. Of course. You're tortured with guilt. But I admire you for it. It's a brave thing that you've done by telling me this. I mean, you've risked my love. And you won. I, I don't want to win. Oh, don't be afraid. We'll fight this together. Well, I, I, I don't want to fight, Miss Now, Brett. tell your wife that you love another. She'll understand. No, no, not her. She's uh, funny that way. She'll give you up. No, no, no not, not, not Nancy. She's a sore loser. See, Miss Brett, you've got things all wrong. No, it's not wrong. It's the way it is. Hi, Alice. Oh, we have to be fair to ourselves. Uh, Miss Graff, you don't understand. It's me, Melvin. Look, I know it's selfish, but she must give you up. We must not put it off. Alice, it's Melvin. I know. Now, we must move quickly. Uh, Miss Graff, will you, wait, will you wait a minute? Oh, our wait is almost over. Soon, a new world will open its doors for us. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> now, look, let me understand this. You say that they're madly in love with each other? Oh, yes. A series of clandestine meetings, dancing every night, soft lights, music, secret rendezvous, visits to romantic places, wild weekends. When did all this start? Yesterday afternoon. <laughs> well, now, how did it all begin? Well, you'll hate me. I brought them together. I told him that I was too shy and that I couldn't talk to her. So he offered to talk to her. Oh, yes. Very friendly of him. And then he went into business for himself. Can you forgive me? Oh, of course, Melvin. He's sneaky, your husband. He tried to tell me that it was all a big mix-up. That while he was talking about me, Alice misunderstood and thought he was talking about himself. I see. Now, you're telling me that she is going to come here tonight to see me? And ask you to give him up. You want me to be here so that I can give you some of my strength? Oh, <laughs> thank you, Melvin, but I think I can manage. Be brave. Oh, I will. Yes. I will. Hello. Hello, Tucker. I'm calling you to tell you that you're a low-down, double-crossing, conniving thing. Who is this? A friend. <laughs> Melvin, what are you doing? You're about to get paid back. At this very minute, Alice is probably on her way to see your wife and tell her everything. Hi, Nancy. Are we alone? Alone? Of course. Oh, good. Hey, I've got a great idea. Let, let's go out to the movies. Now? Before dinner? Yeah, well, we could get there before the prices change. <laughs> well, darling, if you don't mind. Uh, no, you're right. You're right. I, I, I've got a better idea. Let's go away for the weekend. The weekend? But it's only Tuesday. <laughs> well, we can beat the traffic. <laughs> Silly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know. I know. Let, let, let's go visit your good old mother. Good old mother is away. She won't be back until next week. Well, good. We can go to a house and wait. Cal, you seem nervous. Nervous? Me? Oh, that's ridiculous. I'm never nervous. Would you answer that? Answer what? I, I didn't hear any doorbell. I'll get it. Honey, wait. Now, no, Nancy, you know that I love you, don't yes. you? I love you. And, 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 and why answer the door? It's probably just a sales. Cal, will you let me buy? You don't need anything. I've seen to that. Cal! What, 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 what do you want? What do you want? Furs, dresses, jewels, and how much Here's do you need? Here's what I want. Hello. Hello. Is Mr. Tucker in? Uh, yes. I'm Mrs. Tucker. How do you do? I'm Alice Graff. Capital G-R-A-F-F. -F. I would like to talk to you. Could I come in? Oh, yes. Yes, certainly. I've come to talk to you about your husband. Oh. Well, uh, 
That's him, you know. Oh, Mr. Tucker, it's you. Yeah, I, I think I need a shave. Darn. Don't be rude. We have company. <laughs> Won't you sit down? Thank you. Now, is there uh, anything I can do for you, Miss uh, Graff, is it? Yes. Well, I hate to be the bearer of unhappy tidings, but you're about to suffer a great loss. I'm going to take your husband away from you. Oh, thank heavens. I thought something was wrong with the car. <laughs> well, look, Nancy, I can explain everything. Darling, you don't have to. Miss Graff is doing very nicely. <laughs> Go ahead, dear. Thank you. Well, it all happened so suddenly. See, before we knew it, we were swept up in the maelstrom, caught in the tide of human emotions, powerless. Nancy. Cal, I, I understand. A woman can sense these things. I knew something was wrong. The passion was gone from his kisses. He wasn't really trying. He was really only using one lip. <laughs> I'll do everything I can to make Mr. Tucker happy. Oh, good. Now, why don't you start calling him Cal? Oh, may I? Of course. <laughs> these last few years have really been memorable for me. Basking in the sunshine of his smile. Oh, Alice, I'm a lucky woman. I'm very rich. Yes, rich here inside. That's beautiful. <laughs> Don't you think so, Mr. Tucker? Cal. <laughs> Cal. Now, you're sure that you want to be part of his life? Oh, with all my heart? Okay, then I'll make up the guest bedroom. <laughs> Wait, uh, I don't understand. Well, if we're going to share him, you'll be staying here with us. At least that's the way we've always done it before. <laughs> share him? Well, Alice, you don't expect me to give up more than half, do you? <laughs> oh, don't feel pity for me, dear. I'm used to it. You see, I learned a long time ago that Cal could never be happy with just one woman. You mean this has happened before? Yeah, I, I guess it's the savage blood coursing through my veins. I don't know. Call me fickle. I, I just always need that fresh stimulation. <laughs> well, I'll put out some pajamas for you. Oh, say, uh, what size are you? Uh, we have a couple of 10s and an 11. Oh, and there's that cute little sunsuit that belonged to Janet. This is impossible. <clears throat> oh, no. It'll work out very well. You'll see. Two women are really far more practical than one. There's the uh, mental and the uh, physical. <laughs> but I couldn't. I, I mean, I wouldn't. Well, I want to marry him. So? Marry him. But how could you live with... Darling, these are the 70s. We simply have to adjust. <laughs> oh, I'll get it. It's probably Janet, the sunsuit. Should I tell her the room is uh, taken? <laughs> Alice, are you all right? Oh, Melvin, I'm so glad to see you. You are? You tried to warn me, but I wouldn't listen. What's he done? You want me to punch him? <laughs> you mean you'd... Suddenly, my eyes are opening. I feel a new tide surging. Alice, you say the word, and I'll flatten him. No, he's not worth it. Poor Mrs. Tucker. Come on, Melvin, let's get out of here. And you're not a nice man. <laughs> No, 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 let me say it. First, thanks for bailing me out. Second, I learned a lesson, so help me. I'll never meddle or give advice again. Okay. Oh. oh. She left her purse. <laughs> uh, Mr. Tucker, I think she's interested in me now, and, and I do want to make a big impression. What do you think I should do? Oh, well, I tell you, with a girl like that... <clears throat> uh... Fake it, Melvin. Fake it. <laughs> oh, you are impossible. What am I supposed to do with you? Well, now, for that, I, I do have some good advice. Yeah. Now, who is using only one lip? 